My name is Carlos Ramirez. I'm the owner of CR Canine Dog Trainer, and we're here based out of Ocala, Florida. So we do a lot of pet training, and also we focus on doing training for law enforcement in seminars, workshops, and we do some canine sales as well. I think I remember the big video being like the one that Rigney posted yes. of you on the table. So now that he knows the answer, I'll ask the question in multiple different ways. So I just start growling, same answer. I'm growling paw, same answer. Different questions, different ways, but the answer never changes. Tactile pressure, spinching, same answer. Yeah, yeah. You absolutely. know, like, what made that so much different than like what we've seen before? What makes you so much different? I think what made that video be so productive, it was the way I explained things. I was able to explain something and the dog was showing the behavior as I was saying it. So it was very obvious that what I was explaining was working on the spot. And it's one of those, you know, I'm glad it went that well because dog training never really is that good. So I'm glad we were able to capture a really good spot on the, on the session. But it was really the explaining that accompanied the, the example that the dog was showing. I think that in my style of decoying, I always bring that realistic effect that you, like I said earlier, you see the effects right away. We try to do something that it's understandable and we make it so simple that even a dog understands it, right? We try to break it down to as simple as possible. Just like most people break down obedience, detection, tracking, we're able to break it down the same for bite work development or for decoying development. So the breaking it down to simple steps and then building it like, you know, in different processes really transfer to a point where a lot of people can replicate it. It's easy for other people to follow up with. So I got into dogs after my family, my, actually my grandma, she started making fun of me because I grew up in a horse farm. And she told me like, well, if you can train dog, uh, horses, you should try dogs. And I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to give that a shot. And once I got into it, I just, I got hooked, man. There's nothing else I could do. So it just really was by a joke that it all started. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's good. That's yep. good. Yep. Uh, every day I work a dog, and it can be even a pet. And every time I get up, a dog will always keep me going. They will always throw a curveball. They will do something that I never seen before. And just the the pursuit of always figuring out that one more problem keeps you going forever because the problems never stop coming, right? So I wish that a lot of people would ask me instead of how to get into social media or how to get into this big box right away. Like, what kind of work can I do on the bottom ground? Like, where can I start from the very bottom, you know, to get those opportunities in the big spots? Um, I think a lot of people always focus a lot on the Mike Jones that is so successful, Michael Nesbeth, all these people who are really doing it there. You didn't saw the parts before he became social media famous, right? Like all the kennels we had to clean, all the people that we have to work on there and just go pick up literally the suits, go grab me my suit, go get me water, go do all these things. And we did all of that. We started on the bottom, but a lot of people missed that part of our careers. So I wish more people asked, what is the dirty work that I need to do to be able to get to a good spot? How in do the you pay industry? your dues? Exactly, man. And yeah. you have to, right? Like people go to college and they have to pay for it. Right. You have to come in this. If you want to apprentice, you have to pay somehow. So I've been actually buying products from Ray Allen before, but just when I got started, right? I remember you saving money to buy my first sleeve. Then I got hooked up with some of the law enforcement guides and they had the really cool hidden sleeves that I never even seen before. And I was like, where do you guys get those? So it's like Ray Allen, of course. So after that, I started working out with Michael Nesbeth doing all these seminars and traveling. And we always found things that we wanted to tweak our products to make it work for what we wanted, that really hard abuse that we were giving the equipment. And we the, I helped, you know, when Michael, when he was developing the DTFO leather wedge that you guys have, and I helped do all the R&D with the testing and all the seminars we did. And after we got a good, you know, place and you guys gave him the chance and, and put it in your company. And so I, in that way, I helped develop with it. But it's crazy to think that from literally saving a little bit of money to buy a sleeve to just be able to be here with you guys. It's like a dream come true, man. It's pretty cool. Absolutely. You can find me. Everything in social media will be the same. Carlos Ramirez Canaan, the Canaan the Nine at the end. And that's for Facebook, uh, Instagram, all the same. Also, our website is carloscanine.com. And you can go there for all the information and the services that we offer. And for our schedule of upcoming seminars and any other product like the UTFO leather, anything else we're coming on with, uh, it's going to be also in our social media. We keep everything posted there pretty updated. So anything about us, you'll be able to find there.